Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and I am super excited about today's project because I've wanted to do a bookcase quilt forever. I've actually started saving specific fabrics to make a bookcase and so I decided that we ne I'm never going to have all the fabrics I need and you're not going to be able to get all the fabrics I have so we're going to do it out of a cave line because there's so many different fabrics in a cave line. So much fun to play with but this design has got to be yours. Let's look at the quilt. Isn't this great? Now this, I'm gonna show you how to make this block. All these elements, these are gonna be your design elements. This has to be a quilt that reflects you because it's a very personal quilt. And so I'm gonna show you how to do this, but I want you to adapt it to what you do. To make the book review quilt, you're going to need one packet of 10 inch squares. And we have used Cave Classics Prism by Cave Facet for Free Spirit Fabrics. You're gonna need two and a half yards of a background fabric you're going to need a quarter yard of some accent fabric. For your bookshelf, you're going to need one and a half yards of whatever color you choose. For your outer border, you're gonna need one yard of fabric. For your backing, you're gonna need five yards of vertical seams or two and an eighth yards of a 108 wide. You also may need a little heat and bond light for your embellishing and it will also be helpful to have a 12 and a half inch square. Here. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is how to make the books. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a six inch piece of fabric and then we are going to open that up and cut it and we are going to grab four different squares from our pack of, um, of fabrics. And I did, I literally did, I mean you're going to do them all, but when I was doing it I wanted to see all the different ones. So I literally picked four different pieces and so we're going to go in here and we're, we're going to get one that has these circles on it, one that has these pieces on it, maybe a purple one back here. This is really a fun line because there's so many different things. I mean, Cave is just wildly creative with his fabrics. All right, let me pull this one out of here. We're gonna have, oh, let's do a, what do we have here? Oh, two greens. We don't want two greens. We wanna put an orange or something in there. Let me see here, how about this one? All right, so then what we're gonna do is we are going to sew these squares onto this black. So lay them right sides on here, and we're just gonna sew right down the side a quarter of an inch and attach these. Now, make sure you're down from the selvage. You don't want the selvage in your quilt, so come down like that. And then we're just gonna sew like this. And then we're gonna add another square. All right, so. And you should be able to get four squares on one six inch strip. And of course, there are loads of ways to do this. And uh, this is just the way that worked for my brain that came, uh, came into my mind the easiest. Here's one more. Once you get your blocks sewn on squares, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here now and trim these up. So let me scoot this out of the way here. And I'm going to just trim these like this. And then I've got this one here and this one here. And then I'm gonna stack these over here on the ironing board and go ahead and trim all of these. And then we'll press them back all at once. All right, there's our trim. I feel like there is some waste in this bookcase quilt just because the nature of how we're gonna do it, but the outcome is so worth it. It just looks so darling. All right, so we've got all these trimmed up. We're gonna iron them back. All right, so I want you to press, set your seam and then we're just gonna roll this back. We want our seam to stay to the dark side. When you're putting black fabric, you don't want it to show through your other fabric. Set your seam and roll that back. We'll grab another one, set your seam, and roll that back. And the last one here, set your seam, and roll that back. All right, 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to stack these on top of each other. And I do four at a time. So let's uh, line these up really nicely. And you don't have to do four at a time. You can do however many you want. You do want to make sure that if you're going to do several that they are lined up really well. There's that one and this one needs to come over just a little bit. All right. So now comes part of the first part of the creative process anyway, because you get to decide how wide you want these books to be. So you could have the War and Peace book, or you could have the Tiny Poetry book, which either one you want. So you're going to make random cuts. Now I, my cuts truly are random. This is a two inch, like here, and you're going to cut all the way through. And then maybe this one is going to be a three. And I'm just slide my ruler up to meet it. This one could be a one and a half. We're going to have some skinny books up here. And then this one I think I'll do a, hmm, I'll do a two and so I'll end up with a little bit of a, maybe a one and a half out there. But they can be all different sizes and every set of layer cakes that you sew together and cut should be all different sizes. You really want lots of different sizes in your bookshelf. That's what I think gives it the texture and the fun. And so you're going to do this to a bunch of these and you're just going to stack them up over here until you've got a nice big pile of them and then we're going to start putting our books together. Now I have some here that I've cut before right here and I'm just going to add to this stack and then what we're going to do is we're just going to sew these together. Now when you go to sew them together you have a lot of playroom here and you just want to make sure that you're not too far south and too far north. So we want to stagger these. We want these to be a little different and I'm going to put a couple little books together just like this and I'm going to go like this and see how they line up like that. This one can be even a little shorter like that maybe. And then this one could even be a little taller over here or maybe they're the same height. They're just a hair different. I always, I always don't love the exact same. I want them to be just a little different. So we're going to start sewing some of these together. And I think maybe I'll add in a larger piece right in the middle of these. All right, so I'm going to sew these two little ones together. And my piece just slid out from under the other piece, so it's going to be even lower yet. Now, I am sewing this with white thread. That's so you guys can see it. You'll probably want to use black. Or whatever color your background is. Maybe your background is going to be light, and that's okay, too. All right. So I'm just going to open this up, kind of finger press it down. I mean, you can iron it if you want. Um, I ironed mine uh, when I was doing it in my studio because I have a little ironing board right there. I don't even have to get up off my chair. All right, so now I'm going to add this one. I'm going to stagger it up a little bit. And it's a little bit fatter. Looks like a fun one. He's going to be a shorty. We're going to make him go way down here. Now we're going to put another little tiny in here. He'll be tall. And you can see there's no measuring. It's just really playful fun. And you want to get your block to be about 12 and a half inches. Because we are going to trim them down to that, but that's what your block, you, you know, that's what you're shooting for when you're putting these together. Now I have a piece that started over here, like this. Here's my other piece, and I'm going to add that to this side right here. And just sew these two together. And this is going to be wider than 12, but I'll show you what I do here. There we go. All right. So now we have this nice big piece here. We're going to press it out. 
I'm not really worried about what the seams are doing. I'm looking for a nice flat block. You are welcome to flip yours over and make it go the direction that you choose. And we'll flip this over and look at it. Oh, it's a little scary, not too bad. All right. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our 12 inch ruler and we are going to cut this into a 12 and a half inch block. And so this, um, I don't do well with rulers that have a half an inch on them unless I need that half an inch to make my whole block, which is what I'm going to do. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this on my lowest book right here. And then I'm just going to trim this off. Now you can see right here I have two little extra pieces over here. They will go on the next book. And so I'm just going to take this and I'm going to cut across the top right here. And when I was talking earlier about it's a little bit wasteful, I mean that's not terrible for what you get, but it, you know, it is a little bit of waste. And so this is a great one to use scraps and all that. All right. So I'm going to set these aside and I'm just going to make a bunch of these book blocks like this. And so these are going to go any place the books are straight up, you can see they'll fit right in there. And that's how you make the book block. Now all of our blocks are going to be, end up, no matter what I do inside them, they're going to end up being 12 inches. And so now I'm going to teach you how to make the leaning block. So I've sewed three little books together here. You can use as many or as few as you like. And then we're going to attach these little wedges to the side of it like this and see how these are leaning. There's three here and they have this kind of wedge along the side of them. So what I do is I take a piece that's about 16 inches by however wide I want. Now right here, this is leaning right next to a book because I made it the very edge of my block and I just sewed it to the next books. But you can do that however you want. I'm just going to show you the basics here. I'm going to grab a longer ruler because you want to cut a wedge from top to bottom like this. So we're just going to do this. And then what we're going to do, we have two pieces like this and one piece will go on this side like this. And what it does, when you sew it on, this side is going to remain straight. So now my pieces are going this way and this side will come along here like this. And it will make that still have a square shape without it having, uh, you know, with books being on the lean. So then we're going to just sew this on right here. And I always feel like the books needed to lean on something. You know, they, they're, <laughs> they're just not magically going to stay up. My books don't anyway. So I just, I like to make one side smaller. All right, and then let's add that wedge to the other side going the opposite way. So this side has the wide part at this end. We're going to put a wide part at the other end. Flip it around. I'm not too worried about whether things are lined up at the bottom or not because we're going to cut that 12 and a half inches to fit. All right, so let's press this back so you can see how these wedges are going to work. All right, now our goal for this is that we want these kind of to be leaning on a book. And so I know that to do that, first I need to cut this at a 12 and a half on either side, like this. So we're going to get our 12 and a half ruler. And I'm going to lay this on here like this. And I'm just going to trim this edge off down here straight. And then I'm going to trim my top edge as well. All right, so once you get this trimmed up, you can see we have a quarter of an inch here and we can easily fit this into the row of our 12 and a half inch blocks. But what we want to do is we want to make this a 12 and a half inch block as well. So we're going to add some more books to the side of this and we're just going to make sure that it doesn't, you know, go beyond this. We know this is 12 and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch these on here and we will have some, uh, a few more books on here so that it makes a block that is 12 and a half. One of the things that makes this whole quilt work is that no matter what we're putting in there, no matter what shapes we're cutting, at the end of the day, we're going to trim that block to 12 and a half and it will fit in that whole row. All 
All right, so let's add a few more out here. Now there, let's get this one. All right, let's see how close we are. Oh, looks like I need one more book, a little skinny one. All right, we're going to go right here. All right, now let's go press these back. All righty. Now we want to check and make sure this is 12 and a half. And it looks like we are pretty close. All right, so we're going to press that out. And then again, we're going to take our 12 and a half inch ruler and we're going to put it on here and we are making a block. So I actually put my strips together and I got over there and I realized that I'm about a half an inch too small. Well, that makes a very small book. So what we're, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay this strip on here, but I'm going to move it in a little bit because I want to catch a little bit of this. So what it's going to do is it's going to make this book very skinny and the book next to it very skinny, but I think that's going to look pretty cool. So this is one of those improv moments where you just have to go with it and um, because you need that 12 and a half inches to make your full block. So now let's press this back. We can trim this little edge off if we'd like. And uh, then we'll press that back and we should be just wide enough. All right, now we're gonna look here and we are going to lay this on here and we have just enough room, it's perfect. This is one of those trial and error moments where you're like, hmm, well, that's not quite right. All right, so we're going to slice up this side. We're going to come over here to the top. We're going to make sure this side over here stays nice and good and our bottom. And it's 12 and a half and it looks great. And that's how you make your leaning books. And then you can just attach them to the next block, which let's go ahead and sew these two together so you can see how this row is going to look. Just like this because that is just the, just the fun of this thing is that once you get your blocks to the same size, then they're all just gonna fit together. All right, so. All right, and then, this is what you get like this. So how cute is that? It just looks perfect. The books are leaning, gives you a little added something on your bookshelf and just makes it really fun. All right, so let's talk about some of the other things. We have this little kitty block up here. Now, if you follow our triple play tutorials, you know that the Doan Girls just did a whole triple play on the kitty block. Super easy to make. I'll show you how to put that together. Not everybody's gonna want a kitty on their, uh, on their bookshelf, but some of us are. And so to make that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a 10 inch layer cake square and you're gonna cut it into nine and a half by five. So directly in half and then cut a little half an inch off. Then you're gonna put a little two and a half inch square on his, um, back side right here, sew right on the line, iron this back, that's going to give him the curve of his back. Now I'm not going to sew this because we just did a huge tutorial on those kitties. I think you're actually going to really like that tutorial by the way. Then this is his, this is the piece over here that makes the background. This is his face. This is a three by five piece right here. And these are his ears, a black piece which is two and a half by five, and then these become the ears. You have two little two and a half inch squares. We're again gonna lay those up here like this. Actually, it's gonna go this way. You're gonna sew right on the line, iron this back, and you're gonna put two of those on, just like that. And so there's our little kitty block, super easy. If you wanna go look at it, we have a pins and paws tutorial, and we also have our triple play on our kitties. 
All right, now let's talk about this vase right here because this is also very easy to make. And what we're going to do is we are going to take a, uh, a little five inch square like this. And these little corner squares, they're two different sizes. So the little squares on the bottom, I wanted it to just barely come in right there, just barely come in. These are a little deeper up here. And so I have, let me measure these to make sure I have a one and a quarter inch square here and a one inch and a half inch square on the top. So as we iron these back like this, we'll trim them off and iron them like this. Then we're going to add our little top piece like this. And just like that, you get a piece that looks like a vase. So this top piece is two inches by five. And these little corner squares, let's measure those to be sure. They should be the same as these. And so they should be like one and a half, I think I said. Yeah, one and a half. And so we will sew on that line. We can do that right now if you want, just to show you how to do that. We're sewing directly, diagonally. Now this square, you'll notice it does not go all the way up to the top corner. We want the flat edge for the vase and then the neck part to curve in. So we're just gonna sew this right here. Now one of the things, when you are sewing smaller squares, you wanna make sure that your stitch is a little bit shorter because it will, uh, I mean, if you only have four stitches across it, it's not gonna hold on very well. So I'm gonna turn this down, turn mine down to a two, and I'm just gonna take a little bit smaller stitches, stitch corner to corner, and then I will do the same on this one, and you will see how that little vase comes together. Just like that. We're, we will trim these off. You wanna trim all of your little extra background pieces off so you don't have a lot of bulk back there, like this. Press it back. This was, I just had so much fun playing with this when this part started. All right, so then we have this right here, and this is gonna be our vase top right there. Now, doesn't that look like a cute little vase? But obviously it needs a flower, and when you're dealing with anything that Kafe makes, you know there are loads of flowers. And so this flower right here, I literally cut out of the fabric. I put some um, iron on, some a little bit of fusible on the back. And so I have a really cool one today that is here. Look at this flower. And so depending upon the fabric you get or the square you get, you're gonna be able to cut whatever kind of fabric flower that you want, or you can design your own flower. So let me just cut a little piece of this and I'll show you how I did this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my flower here and I'm gonna put this piece just over the flower that I want. Make sure it doesn't get on your mat and just press that down. And now this becomes an iron-on applique. That's what we're doing here. And so basically then we are going to grab our scissors. Let's see here. And we are gonna trim out this flower to put on the top of our vase. See how my flower comes right to the edge right here? I'm gonna make that a petal. So I'm just gonna cut that in with a curve and then I'm just gonna keep going around. Okay, so now we have our cute little flower cut out. How cool is that? We need to finish our vase, and so I'm gonna put that together. Make sure your same size squares are on the top together. We're gonna to sew this right down the side, quarter of an inch, and then we have to make a big enough block around our vase so that, so that our flower can be appliqued on. So we're gonna press this up. And then I have a couple of five inch strips over here and I'm just gonna sew, I'm gonna cut two pieces that are roughly the size of my vase and sew them on both sides like this. 
side and let me look at my base back here oh yeah it's sitting right on the shelf so this is going to be trimmed off right at the bottom so then we're going to go ahead and trim this off straight here like this make sure you're lined up right and then we're going to trim this off here And then let's measure how wide this is. Well, I actually can just use my 12 and a half, can't I? My six is right in the middle there. Now, if you wanted, like with this face right here, this is a 12 inch block, but you could put a book in here a little closer. And if you wanted to add a book on either side, but basically again with this, what we're looking for is that 12 and a half inch block. So this is the width of it. And then we need to make enough to make it 12 inches tall as well. And so I have a piece here, this is about six inches, so I have a piece here that's seven, and that will enable me to trim it down a little bit. Those are for those just in case moments. And so I'm just gonna sew this on here right now. I'm, I'm leaving my selvage out to the edge, starting my block in a little bit, and sew across. And then we're just gonna trim this up and I'm gonna trim it the width of my block because I know that is already 12 and a half. And this way, then we'll press it. Let's go ahead and iron this open. There we go. Now let's put our square on it. Make sure that it's 12 and a half. Look how cute that is. All right, yep. Just perfect. All right. So now what we can do is we can add this flower. And how gorgeous is that going to be on there? Now, before I add this flower, as I was working on this, Natalie said, if you flip that over and you put this piece on the top, this piece could be fussy cut with some little, I don't know, some little scene or something. And it could be like a little snow globe on your shelf. And so that would also be really fun to be able to do. And, uh, I mean, there's just so many great ideas with this. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on here like this, and I'm gonna iron that on there so you can see how that block works. My gosh, that's so cute. Oh, this one's folded under. Let me see if I can peel it back. Make sure none of your edges are folded under. Or you're gonna have this little problem that I'm having. There we go. Look how cute that is. Isn't that just adorable? I mean, it's just so pretty. Isn't that pretty? And so then that would go right in here. And all these little things are made the same way. So I have another little flower down here, and I made a little leaf thing that I put on it. These books are sideways. I have another tiny little vase down here, and it's just a little piece like this. You know, it's just a little tiny piece like this, and it sits on a stack of books. And I literally made two tiny stems and cut out two little tiny cave flowers. So that's how you do this. And once you get all your shelves together like this, you've got your books, you've got your leaning, look at this vase. Just made the same way, only made out of a regular piece of fabric in the, the, in the packet. You're ready to assemble your bookcase. You're going to do that by putting your rows together. And then you're going to put a two and a half inch sashing in between the rows and around the sides, just the sides. Now the top, we want the top to look like an actual bookshelf. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut that piece um, five inches, yep, five inches, and at the very edge, we are gonna put a half square triangle, which means we'll put this on here like this, so corner to corner, and then we'll lay it back like this, and it will give us this top edge right here. And so then down here on the bottom, you're going to do this bottom piece. It's the same width of brown fabric, but this corner piece is going to be a three inch square. And that's going to give it a little smaller, you know, more sturdy bookshelf. Then I wanted to frame this up a little bit. So I actually took 
my gray and did an additional border on the outside. And this is a, this is a nice big uh, five inch border on the outside of my shelf here. And it just makes the whole shelf stand back. You know, it just gives it some pop and makes you notice the shelf. Now this quilt ends up being 72 by 79. And so it makes a great size quilt. But again, that's one of those things you may want to have nice long shelves to do it. So as I'm getting this all finished and I'm quilted it, we quilted it with this great sticky buns pattern and I'm sitting sewing the binding on, I had another thought, another idea. And so this isn't in the quilt, but it sure could be. So do you guys remember when Misty did her easy alphabet? I mean, she did the easy alphabet quilt and it has all the letters in it. I thought, how cool would it be if we did a shelf where we actually spelled out, look at this, read, and put that at the top of the shelf. I mean, this would look so cool. And we again, it will fit right in these shelves. Isn't that so great? I just think that would be a, such a fun idea. You could put anything up there you want. You could make a word that was special to you. You know, some people pick a word for the year or whatever. But I just thought, I thought of her a little easy alphabet and I thought, oh, that's gonna be really cute if we do read up there. So in putting it together, I realized I didn't tell you how many blocks you need. You need five of these. You can't see where the block starts and ends because it's just the line in a book. And so it just makes it really fun and quick. So five 12 and a half inch blocks across here. And also I didn't want to forget to show you this backing. Isn't that gorgeous? This is a big 108 backing and it's just beautiful. I mean, it's just so fun add so much to the quilt. We love how it came together. I hope you have fun with it, and I hope you enjoyed the book review quilt from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you are not already part of the Missouri Star Quilt family, you can hit the subscribe button below so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.